Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 187 of Ham Radio Answers. Today, we'll look at another Chinese radio, one I haven't seen before or heard of before. Now, it's called the Oliwiz HD, HTD825, the Oliwiz. The radios come in a pair for about $50 on Amazon or Alibaba. Uh, you can see the Amazon link if you would like at amazon.to or amzn.to slash two cap C small q cap a cap a small o small o. My interest is to see what they can do on the ham radio 70 centimeter band. Right away my suspicions were aroused as neither the word ham nor the word amateur appear anywhere on the Amazon write-up. The radio is advertised simply as a two-way radio covering 406 to 470 megahertz. Oliwiz has a site, oliwiz.net. All the people in the photos are white, northern, European slash American looking uh, with nary an Asian in sight. For that matter, uh, no one with brown skin at all. The company is relatively new. Founded in 2016 and located in China in Guangzhou on the Taiwan Straits, right across from Taiwan. Many other Chinese radio companies are actually located much further south in the Guangzhou neighborhood, which is much closer to Hong Kong and, and all of the shipping that that offers there. The package has two radios as a set. Each set consists of a radio, antenna, charger, power cord, uh, hand strap, and belt clip. The radios do not come with a programming cable. I did notice you have to uh, push the battery in rather hard to get it to go in. Be sure that it goes in all the way. Be sure to charge the batteries before you use them to make sure that uh, you don't run down what little charge they have. They really do need to be recharged. Now, although there is an FCC logo on the package and on the front page of the manual, as well as in the radio's label inside the battery compartment, there is no FCC ID, meaning this radio is not certified by the FCC against anything. This radio, out of the box, is exactly the type of radio the FCC refers to in its infamous public notice from last September. It's not certified under any FCC rules parts. It's uh, programmed with weird frequencies, okay? And as programmed, could cause issues with uh, public service, fire safety, other people who might be using these things, any other agencies. The pre-programmed channels are not FRS or GMRS, that's Family Radio Service or General Mobile Radio Service. It's not, none of those are in there. It's just all random frequencies above about uh, 450 megahertz. Um, I don't know what these frequencies are that they have in there. Do not use these radios out of the box without programming into it some 70 centimeter handband frequencies. Note again that no amateur radio frequencies are pre-programmed in the memory as it comes out of the box. From a ham radio point of view, this is a 70 centimeter single band, low powered handy talkie or HT radio. It's entirely analog with no digital features, no DMR, no D star. It has 16 channels and that's it and no buttons. 
you can turn the knob and the radio announces the channel number. It doesn't announce anything else. There is no mechanism for direct frequency entry and no menu. The power is advertised at 2 watts, but the power output is about 1.9 watts on my MFJ849 when the uh, radio battery is fully charged. I know that's only 5% off, so that's, that's pretty close. We'll, we'll, we'll count that. I used an instrumentation dummy load, uh, 50 ohms, and the SWR was 1.1, I'm sorry, 121. I notice there doesn't seem to be any difference between high and low power. I programmed one channel for low power, another for high power, got the same result. FM broadcast reception apparently is not available, even though the manual says that it is. The manual is for the entire HTD series, so not every one is covered. It's a very short manual because there's really very little you can do with this uh, right there. Uh, the manual is shortened to the point. Several features are described that can only be accessed via programming. Well, the English is passable, but not that of a native speaker for sure. I don't know why all of these radios, including the Japanese radios, they can't hire some native speaker in the United States or Europe to have them program. So let's talk about programming. As I mentioned earlier, no programming cable comes with the radio. The radio has a Kenwood style plug-in interface right here. So I tried my red cable from PowerWorks, put it in here like this, push it all the way in, plug that into the radio and it works just fine for the programming. So see Ask Dave number 37, which describes the cable. And the cable is available at PowerWorks.com. The SKU is WXUSB, and it sells for $19. The programming software is available on the Oliwiz.net website. Note it's on the second page under customer support. Okay. The software download is packed in RAR or RAR format, not zip. So you need to find something that can unpack RAR. I use www.the7-zip.org. It's free and will unpack several file formats, including RAR. Programming is available for the 16 channels. It's very straightforward. See, so on this screen, you can see receive frequency, transmit frequency. Note, um, not an offset per se. You have to calculate the actual transmit frequency. The standard offset on 440 is five, uh, five megahertz, okay? On 70 centimeters is five megahertz. There's a column for QT and DQT, uh, meaning the radio must hear that information before the squelch will open. We normally don't use that, although it's there. Uh, QT, DQT, encode. Now this is where you set the tone for a repeater. The transmit power, high, low. Again, I can't tell any difference when I'm switching between high and low on, on my power meter. Uh, it's just two watts, which by the way, is not a lot for a handheld. Uh, wide or narrow, ham radio use, by the way, is wide. Scan add, which means whether the channel is scanned. And optional signal, none or DTMF, not explained. And PTT ID, on or off, again, not explained. Also, if you go into edit, there are optional features. There's an entirely separate screen here. These include your basic setup, such as your timeout timers, squelch level, mic sensitivity, um, voice channel um, announcement in English or Chinese. Um, by the way, the English announcement is um, pretty good English. Uh, there's a scrambler. Now, scrambling is not legal in the United States. There's a battery save and a beep. 
There is also VOX, or Voice Operated Relay, which I recommend against using on UHF and VHF equipment, as VOX doesn't work well in noisy environments like automobiles. There's also a push to talk ID, which is not explained, and the key assignments for PF1 and PF2 under the push to talk button, which is, here's push to talk, here's the PF1 and PF2. Also, there's an embedded message, which is not explained. There's no screen for it to display on it. Lastly, there's a DTMF capability with a built-in auto dialer with eight memories. I'm not sure <laughs> how to get to these, to tell you the truth, because the controls are so simple. Well, bottom line, do I recommend this radio? I find it hard to do so. From a value point of view, get a couple of Baofeng UV5Rs, which have menus and buttons and direct frequency entry and, and uh, more memories and also operate on two meters, uh, which you don't get here, and for about the same price, by the way. The Oliwiz doesn't have FCC certification is not aimed at the amateur market, requires a separately obtained programming cable to get it on, on, on ham radio frequencies. And, and it has uh, no keyboard. Uh, it also unambiguously fits the FCC public notice and uh, enforcement advisory uh, definitions of what kind of a radio is not allowed. It's, it's not certified under anything um, and they're not supposed to be sold in the USA. They're sold simply as two-way radios with no information on here about requiring a license or what the frequencies might be for. You know, I think this is close to the first time I have recommended against a radio. There are lots of wonderful radios out there. It's just that this radio is not a good fit for ham radio. In channel news, be sure to watch the Saturday YouTube live sessions held at noon U.S. Mountain Time, which is 1900 UTC. The Saturday live stream is devoted to answering your questions, questions that come in either under Ask Dave or you can send them to hamradioanswers at gmail.com or just ask them in the uh, live stream while the live stream's uh, going on. I really have been enjoying these uh, live sessions on Saturdays. Now, please note the next two weeks I'll be at Quartz Fest, so there won't be uh, a live stream session. The next live stream session should be on uh, February 2nd. Uh, if, if I learn differently, I'll send out a, a notice of some kind. Um, if you are subscribed and you've clicked the bell, you will get a notice comes to you in your email. If you don't check your spam folder, you can also go directly to the live feed at youtube.com slash C slash David Kassler slash live. Now, please note that the next Saturday live stream again will be on February 2nd in 2019. If it's 2020 already when you're looking at this, go ahead and try it on, on Saturday. Thanks for all of your support, suggestions, and ideas. Please like and share this video. Your subscription is a way of telling YouTube that you're putting your vote of confidence in my channel. Now, if after subscribing you also click the bell, you'll get an email notification anytime that I put something new up, whether it be just a post to the channel uh, with some text or a picture or something like that. Now, I like to distribute knowledge widely, and my videos are free for the viewing on YouTube. And I really appreciate the many uh, patrons who are supporting this channel via patreon.com and to those who drop a little something in the tip jar at uh, www.dcastler.com slash tip hyphen jar. 
All of this is greatly appreciated and it allows me to do things like uh, buy these cables and so on and, and see that they actually work. Also note that I have all the amateur extra training videos uh, are available on a thumb drive for US $49.99 postpaid anywhere in the United States. So you don't need to be online to watch them. If you are in another country, please uh, email me and I'll get a postage quote for you. Um, now, of course, you can watch these videos freely on YouTube. You don't need to get the key to see that there. You can see all of these options at dcastler.com support. So until we next meet, 73.